Hey guys, so hey guys, welcome back. Um, in this part, we're going to go ahead and create this inner rim for the case. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and reuse some um, faces of this piece here. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, we're going to go ahead and select this loop here and then go to our edit mesh panel and go ahead and find duplicate face. Once we have that, open up our outliner and then make sure we go ahead and go to edit the little by type history. And then we'll go ahead and grab these two. And let me just make this one a little bit bigger. And then hit shift P to um, get rid of this group. And let's go ahead and select that face that we just duplicated and then go into our front view. And let's go ahead and scale this down just a bit. Let's go ahead and go to modify center pivot and scale this down. I only want to scale it in just a tiny bit to give us this rim. Okay, so probably that will do probably a bit more. Okay, I should do the trick. So once we have that, let's just go ahead and get rid of some of these um, faces that we've done these. So go to Insert Edge Loop Tool and select our face, select our object here. Let's go ahead and isolate it as well and just insert edge loop tool and add loop around here roughly to get rid of the excess that we don't need. And we can go ahead and delete them. So once we have this, let's go ahead and unisolate and go ahead and double click this edge loop like so. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and extrude this. So let's go into our side view and turn on our x-ray and let's go ahead and drag this out a bit so I want it roughly there okay so nearly at the edge of that and that's looking pretty good so once we have that let's go ahead and um, extrude it once more and then hit scale again and just scale it in uniformly let's go into our front view so you can see what we're doing Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And what I want to do is I want to roughly line this up um, here. So that's looking good. And scale it up here. And what I'm trying to focus on is to get this middle edge roughly lined up. Okay, with the corner of that. And that should roughly do it. We can go ahead and move it around a bit more later. Let's also grab this um, this loop and just scale it a little bit. Okay, roughly like that. That should do the trick. Okay, so we got this panel done as well. We now are going to go ahead and um, make these straight. So let's go into a front view again, and let's go ahead and cut half of it. So we only got to work on one half. Okay. So let's go ahead and come in here and let's go ahead and start moving these words around. So the first thing that we're going to do is probably um, line this corner up. <clears throat> so probably our corner piece should um, be this word and not that one. So we're going to have three edges here and then three edges there. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and move this. Um, let's turn on our x-ray so we can see what we're doing. And let's go ahead and move this there. And then for the rest of these, we can just go ahead and um, scale them so they will be straight. And then if I select the axes and hold down V, I can go ahead and um, snap it to the right angle, like so. Let's go ahead and scale these and um, move these down a little bit as well. Apart from this one, we're going to go ahead and move this one a bit closer to that. So that will act as our supporting edge. So this will keep its um, corner, okay? So let's go ahead and grab these and then again scale these so it will be straight. And we can actually grab all of these um, on the top. So let's go ahead and grab all of them, including that last one. And just move it, oh, like that one. Scale it down so it will be straight. And now let's go ahead and move it down. So let's go ahead and scale it a bit more so it's completely flat. Okay, and then again, move tool, select that axis, hold down V and snap it to that. That one. Okay, so now that's straight as well. 
And let's go ahead and move this vert again to closer to that one. And that will act as our supporting edge, okay? So now let's go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom. And that looks okay, that looks fine. And what we can also do here is um, just make sure that these line up a little bit better. So this one is our corner piece. All that. that one is our corner edge, and that's our supporting one, supporting two. And then with this one, we sort of want to have the same spacing. So I'm just going to move this one up so roughly they have the same spacing. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm just going to go ahead and drag this up a bit more. So they're roughly there the same, okay, and that way the um, corner will deform the same way when we go ahead and smooth it. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom. So again, let's go ahead and have three on the top, and then that will be our corner. And then these three will be our bottom three. So it's kind of like doing a manual bevel, but we move the verts around, basically. So let's go ahead and grab all of these, and then move them up the scale to straighten them out. Okay, and let's go ahead and move it where they should be. And then this will be our corner one. So let's go ahead and snap this up here so it's the same height. Now let's go ahead and grab these three and we can go ahead and straighten these out as well actually. And let's go ahead and snap them up here. And then with this word, we're gonna go, go ahead and move that closer to that to act as our supporting edge. And actually what we should really do is um, grab these three and snap it to these. So that way it will be, we can be sure that this is going to be straight. Even though it doesn't line up with our reference, it's fine because our reference is on a wonk. Um, but this way we can be sure that this is actually going to be straight. So let's go ahead and straighten these words again because they weren't straight. And then select that axis again. Hold down V, snap it to there. Okay, so once we have that, let's go ahead and move this word down. So that will act as our supporting edge. Same with this, move it a bit closer. And then let's go ahead and make sure that these have the sort of similar spacing that they do here. So just going to move this over. Okay, and that should do the trick for us. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a look how this is looking. So we can go ahead and smooth this. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, what we need to do is we need to add in uh, a couple of extra edges here. So we'll hold this shape. But we'll go ahead and do that after we duplicated it over. And the reason for that is because if you go ahead and add in the loops now, uh, when we duplicate it over, we're going to have to merge the extra verts. Whereas this way we can just um, duplicate it over and we'll have to um, we'll have to go ahead and merge to get less vertices and it will be easier to add the um, supporting edges after. So let's go ahead and uh, I just duplicated it with Control D, select Scale, and then in Scale X, let's go ahead and put a minus sign here and it will duplicate it over. And once we have that, make sure we select both of these and then go to Mesh Combine. So once we have that, let's go ahead and make sure we delete all the history, get rid of this group node, and there's our mesh. So let's go ahead and uh, combine all these verts. So I'm just gonna go to Vertex and select all of them. And let's go ahead and isolate this piece so you can see better what we're doing. If I select this object, isolate, select all of these words, and then go to merge, merge vertices, merge vertices with the option box. And uh, depending on how far these are, we might have to try a different setting, but let's try uh, 0 0.2 and see what happens. Okay, and I seem to have done it fine. Let's go ahead and have a look if everything merged together perfectly, and they did, so 0.2 done the trick for us. Or for me anyway, you might have to play around with it a little bit. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Select them, merge them together, and press F to zoom in on my selection. And it seemed to have merged together perfectly. Okay, so once we have this, let's go ahead and smooth it again and see where we need to add in our supporting edges. So I want this to be uh, a little bit more, um, more sharp. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, if I isolate this again, let's go ahead and add in um, the edge loops here. And there, just to make sure it will hold its shape and here. So we'll get a nice um, corner here. And let's go ahead and add in, probably we'll only need one um, around here. Let's go ahead and see what happens there. 
Okay, so that's a little bit better. Um, if we look at our reference, that's pretty close to what we need. So I'm just going to unisolate, and maybe this um, maybe this bend is a bit too much, the way it curves. But for now, it should do the trick, and we can always go back and um, adjust this curve. So I'm talking about this edge so because you remember how we scaled it down we might have scaled it down a bit too much so we can go ahead and always scale this back up and that way it will be curving a bit less okay so that looks about right to me okay so that's great we've got this piece created as well so in the next part we're going to go ahead and start creating this um, front piece here okay so I'll see you guys in the next part